I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted, but there are still baseball games today. And there's so much going on here. And so many people are starting to actually follow up and, and update their own algorithm daily based on the questions I'm getting and the number of people that keep telling me, thank you for me winning all this money with your thing tells me that a lot of people are, are using it and seeing how easy it can kind of be to update. And also the imperative nature of updating things. I just woke up from nap because I, I've been working like nonstop, like, like, a, like, a, like a real man, actually, like manual labor, like picking up, picking up the trash and moving it and taking out heavy stuff and tables all by myself, um, doing a ton of that work. And I'm exhausted, but I have to talk about what's going on with the baseball algorithm because as I woke up from a, a nap that I desperately needed, I wanted to see what was going on. Um, it was it was kind of a fun day while I was awake. I had a shot at over a grand. And then because there were five runs in the ninth inning of the Dodger game, I lost an under bet. I mean, hilarious. This is why I like betting a little to win a lot. Like, this is what happened. I, I had a pick here. I got some crazy lines on Boston minus one and a half in like the ninth inning when I knew it was tied. They might win the game by two. And Colorado to win in the seventh inning at plus 350. Won those off outright. And the San Diego game was one nothing in the ninth, and they ended up putting six runs total, and that loses. And St. Louis, St. Louis looks like it's also going to lose. So this is only going to pay uh, probably like a hundred bucks or something, um, maybe maybe a little more. But this was like a six hundred dollars swing if I could hit all, hit all of them. So it was a funny day. That's what I'm saying. Bet a little that fifty one dollars to have six hundred dollars swing losses. It feels a whole lot better when you didn't actually bet six hundred dollars and lose it on on a swing like that. Swings mean just like when you combine games on round robins and parlays, you are leveraging a smaller bet by conditionals of, of things winning. And when you do it in a round robin fashion, meaning you do different combinations of parlays, just two at a time, three at a time, whatever it is, you, you limit the impact of losing a game. However, losing any game is extremely impactful in your payout and losing multiple games is exponentially. So it, or not exponentially, but it, it is, proportionately damaging to your payout. And so it's it's not like you can do seven of these and go four and three and have a good day. You can't, you have to go like six and one or better. But when you do, it's phenomenal. And it does happen when you wager a lot. So I will talk about what results we have today. I followed some of the games in and out while I was driving around um, uh, and working obviously. So I, I built this daily results sheet which is a new pivot in the Google Sheet that you can purchase access to for $30 for 30 days. And you'll be able to see everything that goes on whenever I update it. I'm doing the best I can with as busy as I am to try to get this, but the issue is a very common problem. And, and it's kind of what I want to talk about in this video and what prompted me to do this video was a guy named Sean Higel. Uh, why Sean Higel? Well, Sean Higel was not scheduled to start this game. Somebody else was scheduled to start this game. And we're going to know who that is by looking at our Google sheet, which is why I keep an Excel file and a Google sheet. And if you're keeping your own Excel file, you'll want to check in with the Google sheet to help you look at what may have happened when you updated and stuff changed. So let's talk about that. San Francisco. Does this name look like Sean Higel? Nope, that looks like John Brebia, a lot of Bs, right? Well, apparently they went with picture number HJ or letter HJ instead of BBB for some reason. That changes this matchup. And St. Louis, is, or sorry, San Francisco is the Giants are no longer at a 5% uh, team power and 8% margin. Do you know what they're at in the Excel file when you got that right and you, and you caught that change? They're only at a 4% margin and their team power is at 1%. 1%. That sounds like bad, doesn't it? <laughs> right? Let's sort all these teams by power and see if it had a better looking day top down. The answer is Dodgers lost. The answer is it didn't. These games were sort of not really even close i mean the yankees didn't score a run got like one hit in the ninth inning or something um minnesota lost to baltimore kind of you know the, the margin wasn't great margin here is not great in the st louis game they look, they look like they are lose, losing right now uh, for nothing i believe so 
and the Dodgers lose a tough one after being up the whole game. That's a sad one for Kershaw, right? Kershaw doesn't get the loss in that game, but he doesn't get the win, and that's sad. Uh, but then you have some things that were good. You have Milwaukee, uh, the Mets. I don't know why he keeps picking Toronto. Tampa Bay's been playing better. But look at how far San Francisco is down here. And they get crushed by the White Sox. So I, I like sort of looking at power and margin at the same time. Um, you know, I mean, you have a, a team with a good margin and a good power. Like those are going to be the ones where this column is green and this in this top down scenario. Well, Dodgers should have won, didn't. Uh, Houston does come back and win. The Yankees can't get it together. You know, it, it, Cleveland finally wins a game. Here, there was a terrible almost flip of margin, so you, you'd stay away from this. Minnesota and Baltimore, why do you, you can't get it to, to pick Baltimore for us? I'd have to look and see what can be done there. Devin Smeltzer got hit, I guess, right? Or Baltimore just pitched well. Whoever pitched for Baltimore, was it Tyler Wells? Uh, whoever pitched the game for Baltimore did, did a good job, I guess. Yeah, Tyler Wells, and he did have good stats, so... Uh, he, he just Devin Smelter had amazing stats so far this year. And it was tough to out stat him as the opposing pitcher, even though Tyler Willis tries to go, do a good job. So we get Baltimore's runs exactly at three and they just hold their, their, their pitching holds against Minnesota's hitting. I guess you'd have to lower Minnesota's lineup factor somehow. So we could look at the batters and look at the lineup factors if we wanted to, but we don't have all day. All right. So Looks like a mixed day. It's obviously about a, a pick em day. When anytime you see, uh, I call it the barber pole, where there's, you know, light, red, red, green, or, you know, pink, green. It, it, there's a string of losses here. That's sad. But then pink, green, pink, green. Let's look at it by margin as well to see if that, that, that pattern looks, eh, you know, a little choppy, but you do have two wins up top when you sort this descending by margin uh, and your underdog loses for the day. So not a great day after a really good day yesterday, um, but some close games like Atlanta blew a lead late um, in this scenario. The Cubs had this weird pitching matchup. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to do. So Connor Siebel, guess what? Pitcher for Boston. Well, I had to make a decision on which pitcher stat year to use for him. If you use the one with the most innings and go with AAA, that flips the outcome of the game to make the score exactly correct. <laughs> And all of a sudden you go from seven and eight to eight and seven and you get a win with Boston right here and you hit the score. Exactly. That's the kind of stuff where, you know, it doesn't work if you use 2022, 2022 is his, his four innings pitch in the major so far were ridiculous. And that doesn't help you. That puts the Cubs as the number one pick of the day or three, number three pick of the day up there. Right. So you'd have to just go under the logic that anybody under like five innings pitched, you just shouldn't use it. That means Hegele, we shouldn't use it. Shouldn't use it with a jelly. What are we supposed to do? Or a gel? Does he have AAA? What does he got? I don't know. The answer is I don't know this guy. And this would have been some real work to do on the algorithm right before this game started to try to figure out and look this guy up and put in your own set of pitcher stats for him because it, it was a mess, basically. All right. Now, that being said, whatever. Um, it's just interesting to know all the information you can get because this is really what the look should have been with AAA stats with Seabold. And um, and then you have Boston as an underdog. And of course, you see, I bet Boston on one of my tickets after I saw that he didn't get rocked in the beginning of the game. Now, let's get to tomorrow. All right. So let's talk about July 4th because will I do a video with, with my July 4th firework round and round at the end of the day or something? Maybe. I'm obviously not going to do it while we're on expected lineups because the one I did last night, I think, worked out horribly. Um, if I just off memory, I think it, I think it lost like five or six of the seven. So using uh, information from the night before is not optimal and only should be used, in my opinion, when you are unavailable to bet when the games are actually starting uh, and, and not be able to live bet. Because I'm learning that live betting is just fascinating. Um, I think that live betting is, is really where a tremendous amount of value in wagering is right now. And um, I, I'm just I'm just astonished to see the lines shift uh, and fluctuate so uh, so drastically um, with, with relatively small like um, game fluctuations almost like just people on base and stuff like that and lines are shifting by like 30 and 40 percent of what they are. It's just 
it's it's astonishing. Um, it's just like a stock and, and the stocks and, uh, and the options, I guess, in the stock market do a very similar thing. And, and there's just this weird daily fluctuation of value. And, and in the same way that you can do what's called um, playing the volatility in the stock market, you can also uh, cash out and make new wagers on games and live games and situations as 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 game flow changes. And like, you know, Houston was down. I had a ticket today where I got Houston at plus 178 to win the game because they were down by a couple runs. And they were such they were so high up on that list. You can see they were actually the number one pick of the day at this point. Um, when we go back to the Excel file and look at the day, Houston was number one up here by margin. So them down two nothing in the fifth inning is still okay, uh, especially against the Angels bullpen. So to get that at plus 178 instead of minus 227 just shows you the drastic difference in lines for the same outcome of Houston winning. And they even managed to cover uh, late in that game, I believe in extra innings or the ninth or something um, by, a, by a home run. So amazing, right? There's that, that's kind of amazing. And this top-down look by margin when you flip that Boston game actually looks pretty okay, which is five and three in the top eight. And if you've done a round robin at five and three, you'd probably about break even the way that I like to distribute those. Anyway, all that being said, um, let's talk about tomorrow so that I can get this out of the way because it was, um, it was impossible for me to get stuff up before the game started today. I was literally like disposing of hazardous waste. The people at the dump, um, when I brought them a van full of paint cans and hazardous like just cleaning material motor oil all kinds of stuff that i found that had been hoarded over 20 plus years when i showed up they were reading they were looking at things they're like wow we haven't seen motor oil from the 70s in a long time and i was like yeah yeah it came out looking like chocolate syrup i actually had to pull, pour it down the the metal container uh, into the big huge drums that they have that keep the oil and uh let me tell you cleaning out old stuff and Sandy. All right. En enough of me whining. Here are tomorrow's lineups. Let's see if we can copy them. I don't you might not be able to see this screen, but this is the, the lineup on rotowire.com. Go there. They're awesome. We're going to go into the lineup sheet. We are going to paste it. And we are going to understand that some team names, I got a question on YouTube today about getting an error for the uh, for the lineup factor when we get over to the matchup sheet. And that is because a pitcher's name will be abbreviated on the daily lineup sheet. And when the pivot table just doesn't fix it properly, I would have to do some additional coding. Instead, I just do that every time. Uh, it's one of the, one of the rare manual uh, overrides that you have to do in this file in order to correctly um, correctly match up a picture name from one sheet being the odds sheet to the other sheet being the daily lineup sheet. And so that's why that happens. So uh, looks like there are 14 games tomorrow. We'll double check that somewhere in a second. Let's give everybody 22 stats. Something is massively broken right now. I don't know what it is. Um, what is broken? This, this looks weird. Some, something is broken, broken. Um, okay, so let's I'll show you how I diagnose problems. I have no idea what is going on right now. Um, well, first of all, uh, we've got odds. Okay, that's fine. We have a matchup sheet. We're, we're getting a money line. Oh, we're not getting a team, it looks like. We're not getting a team. So I deleted the team formula somehow. So let's assume that, um, I guess I, when I deleted the scores, I deleted the team. So in order to grab the team, this is all just connected directly to the odds sheet. So you just do that. Let's see if that works. Voila. Okay, that looks like what it was. And if you wanna have some type of formatting that you're gonna use, um, then you can do it like this and now pull this down by twos and you'll be able to see the games lined up a little 
that. Now, actually, we need, we need to put a border under here. We probably should put it under final score as well. I think that's where you need to have a border here to have it work better on your eyes. This is a very tough sheet to work with. I understand looking at it, there's so much data that it is just difficult to look at. But that seems a little better, right? So um, I understand why there are errors everywhere else, but that, yeah, that was a weird problem. So Garrett Hill, don't know what your situation is. Where's your situation, Garrett Hill? Garrett Hill, who are you? All right, we need to figure out what's going on with Garrett Hill, the pitcher. So we're going to override another pitcher if Garrett Hill is not in here, which I'm guessing he's not in. And uh, we'll just override um, somebody from a previous year. I'm just scrolling up. I mean, you could insert a row as well, but I like overriding people when they have like one game. Tyler Ivy of Houston, you've been overridden. So this is a new pitcher for Detroit, I believe. Garrett Hill. So we have to look him up and figure out what's going on and why he doesn't have any stats. Okay, it does. He's probably making his major league debut, getting an extended rotation. He was with Toledo, Triple A, eight games, thirty-seven point two, two and two, four oh six, one twenty-four. Eight. I don't know how old he is. Eight. Thirty-nine was maybe two and two. Uh, I forgot already. 4.06 and 1.24. All right. And was it 39 innings pitch? It's 37.28 games. Okay. So we're going to add some AAA stats. Now this is called AAA, not 2021. So now he will appear in the matchup sheet when linked in with AAA stats. That looks like the only change we need to make. And voila. We've actually got a preliminary look with um, expected lineups for the day. So I wanted to make the goal of this video to be, wow, we got a lot of dates in here. Somebody was asking me if there's a collective win loss for the whole, you know, what's your win percentage or whatever. Um, well, if you, if you think this is totally right, which it's not, it's, it's, there's a lot of mixed up stuff, but it's close to right. And you looked at every day, it's 674 and 467. It wins 59% of its games. There you go. And, and that's how you can look really, really briefly. And you can say, how much, how is it done in, Ju in July? 29 and 17. How did it do in June? Which I apparently got every day of the month of June. Did I really? Wow, good for me if I did. 244, 159, 61% win. And of course, you can see it sorting itself, descending by margin to see where those games were. So that's how you can look at stuff if you want to look. I don't know what the actual profit, win percentage, or whatever. There's a lot of complicated ways to answer that question, um, but that's just the basic way to look at what that what that's doing. So tomorrow, no line on this game. Underdog Minnesota with the White Sox. Good line for Baltimore, Texas. Good line for Boston at home against Tampa Bay. Baltimore's in Baltimore against Texas. The favorites are showing up at the top. And what did I say about power? All right, so we're, watch out for weird Cleveland Detroit with low Cleveland power. Watch out for low Cleveland power. So this is a double header. Low Cleveland power sounds like a sounds like a thriller. Um, Miami and Washington. Super low margin, but it's been tough to have this thing favor Miami anyway. Uh, and that's in Washington. So it looks like kind of a tough board, but um, we, you can start digging into each game matchup, which I'm sure I'll, I'll do something tomorrow. I'll probably craft a, a crazy bet tomorrow. Oh yeah, the one thing I want to do before we're done. Let's add it to the Google Sheet for all the people that are waiting. And then you can start to access it uh, and play with all the wind and weather, which I'm not going to update right now. If you think I care about tonight's version of wind and weather, for these games, I do not. I do not care to do that tonight. But here are the remaining, what I believe are 14 games. And I want to double check that somehow to make sure I got the right, nah, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, but all right, so, so when you start to work with wind and weather and temperature and stuff here, which we can do, um, you can start to see how that will affect scores. 
But just off of eyeballing it, what's the highest projected scoring game? You got an 8-2 game, Houston-Kansas City for 10 runs. You got 10 runs here with Chicago-Milwaukee. You've got nine runs, Colorado Dodgers in LA. But the high scoring game is this one, which is Kansas City and Houston. And it comes out of Houston's runs hitting Jonathan Heels Heasley, uh, who's got a high ERA and the lineup factor for Houston's generally pretty good. But you'll wait for a confirmed lineup. So, you know, there's an ex the over game is that one, and the over under on that is set at nine but they're supposed to get over there and it's supposed to be heavily Houston zero so game Houston team runs all right I'm not going to start talking betting tonight because it's too early but for those of you who care that's the look and this is the look by descending by power which I also think should be looked at and um yeah right so that that says watch out for Atlanta and St. Louis there's only a nine percent margin here but Atlanta's power is good doesn't say they score a lot of runs. Like, I really like this color coding that's going on here, right? Just let me ex quickly explain. I can't seem to shut up. Let's quickly explain why I like this to, to read this and why it's helpful. So green is good. Red is bad. So whenever you see red line with really, really green, that makes a lot of sense. That means that the algorithm and the odds makers are in alignment about what they think is going to happen in this game. And so everybody is betting, assuming that the green here makes a lot of sense. Dodgers are gonna score a lot of runs against Colorado. They're probably gonna beat them a lot. Algorithm says the score of that game is seven to two without wind and weather. So everyone's betting on the Dodgers, even though they just blew a game to San Diego in the ninth inning. But Colorado is not San Diego. So there's nothing, I would say nothing to see here, um, right? Because it, it's just kind of like, well, you can bet on the Dodgers to win. But what's interesting about this is, well, where is their disparities? Like, what if there's a really green number all the way down here for runs or something? Which actually there is almost. There's six for Miami down here. So start to look at this, and then you're, you start to realize, like, well, where do I want to focus on overs and unders? And also, where does the algorithm think the power is going to come from, and how are these games going to be won? So this says that the Atlanta-St. Louis game is, is won in a lower scoring fashion. So what is it doing? What is it kind of predicting about the, the most likely game flow for that game? It's saying that um, that both of these pitchers, look, look, they're green and they are almost mimicking each other in many ways, these guys. Pitching a lot, winning a lot, Kyle Wright especially so. Um, and, and, and just a battle of, I believe, good teams where the pitchers seem to win out giving up about three runs. So staying under six or seven is probably reasonable. You get an over under of nine. So depending on what the weather is, which I'll, I'll just check real fast because it does matter. The weather in Atlanta, let's just see if you can take an under in this game. Uh, the weather in Atlanta is three mile per hour out, 23% rain and 84 degrees. So that's not necessarily gonna be conducive for not, no runs. Um, so it's tougher. I just, it makes me think about all the things I think about that you could think about when you're making a wager like that. But understanding that uh, it's a lot harder for, supposedly, it's a lot harder for these teams to have a crazy game that's 9-7. It's, it's much more likely a 5-3-ish to three -ish type game at, at the higher end, to 6-6-4, six, six to four or something like that, but not like you probably go under this. As you can see, this is 7.5 runs. The over-under is 9 saying a total of seven and a half. So you, you would take the under there. Anyway, um, so I just, we got on that subject because I saw what? I saw a low margin here and I saw a lower score projection. And we ended up talking about an under in this game. But you can also say, well, Atlanta's got a really good pitcher going. He wins and they're at home. So did they win this game? Well, the algorithm puts them as the third pick of the day by power. But what do they do by margin? They put Atlanta all the way down here as the ninth pick. So they're not that much better than the matchup against St. Louis, but they are a really good looking team with that lineup. That's what I like to see about this. See how it says like stay away from Cleveland here because of the low power, right? It's like, it, like, like you would, you definitely want uh, Atlanta over St. Louis instead of Cleveland over Detroit. 
because of the power disparity. Like if you win the Cleveland game, it's because Detroit screws up. If you win the Atlanta game, it's because Atlanta plays very well and outplays a, a, a pretty good St. Louis lineup, you know? So it's just the way the game should go. Um, it just, uh, I find that a, a very telling way to view this. Like where are your runs supposed to be? You're supposed to be with the Mets, Houston and the Dodgers, right? These are all green right here. Who's supposed to go under in runs? Minnesota's supposedly not going to score, score very many runs. San Francisco, not very many at 4.3. Um, for a winner, anyway. If you wanted to open it up and see what the other teams are supposed to score and see where really the lowest scoring team should be, you can unfilter this. And you can see, um, let's sort. Nah, it's a tougher sort. But look for the reds, the oranges and the reds. Uh, what is this? Oh, yeah, let's not do... This is, this is a, it's screwing stuff up. There's an accidental game in here with no information. Let me fix that. Yeah, let's get rid of this. That will fix that problem and go back. And this will be better. Okay, so the lowest scoring runs. Wow, Cincinnati is only supposed to get like one run. Uh, Texas, two runs. Colorado, only two runs. Less than a run, Oakland. Right. See how you can look at it this, this way. You can even sort by it, but I don't want to get. I'm just going berserk at this point. So the point is, is um, fascinating things. I'm liking what it's doing. I had another run at almost a ton of money, and I'm probably ending up up for the day again, um, doing a bunch of different round robins. So, like the algorithm, while it doesn't get everything right, it does get you better than average information and a lot of stuff all right so good luck everyone may all your picks be winning i will try to get back with the july 4th round robin pick of the day as lineups get confirmed god there's like 11 a.m it's a weird start time that's the other thing I'll, I'll end this video on is it's really difficult to always be available whenever lineups are announced to update the file and do any changes it's, it, that no one person can do that that has to be an automated process but it's really difficult to automate everything because you don't know what curveball you're going to be thrown about pitcher name or about uh, inserting a player that has, hasn't been rostered before. Or, um, but it's mainly, mainly those two and how to adapt. And you just have to look at it. Even if it's a few second fix, you have to do it. And so getting the Google Sheet updated and correct in a timely manner is easier on a night where like all the games start at 7 p.m., the earliest ones, and you can get almost all the lineups confirmed at like 6 p.m., and then I can do a video and update this thing at like 6.30. That, that all makes sense. But on a weekend, when games are starting at noon and going all day, spread out the day, and, and at 11 a.m., you only have three games lineups confirmed like, like today. Like I started, um, I started to look at this, although I didn't even get, maybe I, I looked at this around like 1.30, I think is when I posted and I got just the one o'clock games, I think. Yeah, just down here or something had lineups. Like it wasn't, I don't know. It was really, really spotty and difficult. So we just would do the best we can. You, you learn how to update yourself. You get a copy of this and you get comfortable with updating yourself. You don't have to rely on me. I wouldn't rely on me. Don't rely on me to get this stuff up on time every day. It's not possible. Um, it's possible to get something up, but not to get the most accurate lineups up all the time. It's not for one human being. It's too much. Every day of the summer, that's why I keep telling everybody, I'm like, you don't understand the commitment with this. It's like every day I got this on my mind um, because people care and it wins. So whatever, guys. Good luck, everyone. May your fourth be awesome and your picks be winning.